In this video, plywood strips are measured, cut, glued, and stapled to create a full-scale pattern of the keel structure from stem to stern, and onto which the station marks and the rabbit line are transferred from the paper pattern. Hi, I'm Bill England of the Ambler Odyssey's YouTube channel. I'm building a George Bueller designed 48-foot wooden troller yacht here in the sea clamp boat shed in the backyard of my Summerside, Prince Edward Island, Canada home. When completed, we will sail the seven seas in search of adventure. drawing in the fair curve at the base of the stem post. So that took a lot of brain cells to draw in the lines of this bow section. And you can see I made a few mistakes, so disregard the uh, any line that's got a squiggle on it. But we're here at the bow, and this is where the bottom keel curves upward to the bow stem, where three different keel sub-assemblies will be joined and so it, it took a little while you know to, to get the, the points where the curves start uh, to get them in uh, roughly the correct positions but I, I think I got it so here this blue line is the keel this is where it crosses station 2 and begins to curve up and here it becomes a straight line again up to the top of the bow stem. The top of the keel comes along this line and then the, the stem knee, which is a triangular piece, will fit in here. The stem knee is here. The uh, keel, bottom of the keel assembly is here and then the stem assembly is here and they all join right here so that's going to be quite the uh, challenge uh, getting this once i have all the assemblies made up to cut out and fit smoothly and you can see here's the rabbit so again it makes a curve and becomes straight and parallel to the front of the stem roughly here so again Rabbit is where the outside of the planking will go into the boat. So there, now I can uh, do up the, uh, the patterns for this and rest my brain. This one hurt a little bit. Although not required, I drew in the various keel subassemblies. Here at station 34 is the two subassemblies H and G of the shaft alley. Nine feet further aft is where the propeller shaft will exit the keel. Here is the notch where the forefoot will fit into the ballast keel. Shaping that will be a challenge. Getting used to walking the length of the boat. Well, so I think. With the full scale dimensions of the keel pulled from the table of offsets and marked, a full scale pattern can now be created. The patterns are made from quarter inch ply I had removed from the house renovating the storeroom. Reduce, reuse and recycle as they say. The ply is cut into two inch wide strips that will then be cut to length as needed.
Making patterns is a tried and true method in boat building. Thank you to naval historian Dr. Richard Gimblet and naval architect Richard Greenwood for this photo of a U.S. shipyard where a pattern is being made for use in building a U.S. naval warship. Starting midships, the wood strips are laid against the upper and lower keel lines. A hot glue gun and stapler are used to connect the strips together. The strips are laid along the vertical station marks. The pattern is starting to take shape. At the forward end, at frame 14, you can see the forefoot is sloping upward towards the stem. Telltale pose of the gray matter trying to figure something out. Measuring for station 34. The short pattern strip I am placing is where the propeller shaft will leave the engine room and pass through the shaft alley. The shaft alley will be made from two keel sub-assemblies which will be hollowed out before being glued together. This line represents the lie of the propeller shaft. Just as when drawing the marks on the paper, accuracy is just as important making the patterns. Errors here will be compounded when marks are transferred from the pattern onto the keel. Measure, cut, repeat.
The stern pattern involves many angles. Here I am working on the transom knee, where the transom will be bolted to the keel. With the pattern of the transom knee in place, its after side indicates the angle the transom will lie on. Using a batten, I am transferring that angle down to where it intercepts the base of the keel to help determine the length of the skeg. Gudgeons on the skeg will hold the pintles from the rudder. The quality control crew likes to make their appearance known every once in a while. The bow pattern presents its own challenges as the forefoot narrows to the stem knee and notches into the stem post. The stem knee template is used as a double check on my measurements. It will be used later to shape the laminated stem knee.
measuring for the stem post pattern. The post itself will be a laminated timber measuring 10 feet by 10 and a half inches and weigh about 150 pounds. The keel will form a curve from the forefoot to the stem post. To make a curve, short strips have been cut, with one end cut to a point. The point is lined up on the keel line and then the strip is glued to the pattern. When the pattern is placed on the finished keel, marks will be made at these points on the keel and a curve drawn to connect them. The job foreman has returned to inspect my work. The rabbit line from the paper is also transferred onto the wooden pattern to later be transferred onto the keel. The first phase of many in building my 48 foot trawler yacht is complete. The lofting has been uh, finished and the patterns have been made. Here's the bow. The pattern that extends vertically is the bow stem. So it extends 13 feet off the baseline, about 8 feet above the waterline. I have the, the rabbit uh, marked on there. That triangle is the stem knee moving aft. This is the, uh, the fore keel widens out. That keel is uh, just over two feet thick here. Here we're just getting into the engine room where it starts to uh, get thicker. This is the engine room, after engine room bulkhead. That uh, short jaunt up is the entrance to the shaft log, where the uh, shaft will leave the engine room and proceed down. And this is where the keel will be its thickest, right at the this point, at over four feet. The skeg 
down below and up above the stern knee. This line here angles, that'll be the angle of the transom. This is the after stateroom. So my sweet little head will be just above that uh, stern knee somewhere. It's taken me two weeks to put this together, not full time, probably a few hours a day. Learned a lot along the way. And it uh, gives me the first full visual representation of what will be my boat. The patterns are racked and stacked, waiting for the day when they will be attached to the finished keel in about a year. With the patterns removed, the lofting paper could be rolled up and stored away. first phase of the boat build is finished. A great sense of accomplishment. In the next episode, despite the winter weather outside, we prepare to build the boat frames. The frame for the framing table is constructed, covered in OSB, and given a coat of paint. For a front row seat on this do-it-yourself boat build project, please like and subscribe to the Ambler Odysseys on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube.